Hey guys, welcome back to News Dump, and I have a very special guest today. This is Arab Powell. How you guys doing? You might remember him from uh, Idiots Watching Anime, where we watched One Punch Man. Thank you for joining me. No problem. Thanks for having me. Let's, I had a great time. Let's get right into it here. Now, this week was filled with plenty of huge stories for fans of entertainment. Uh, we'll get to some of them. Uh, now, this is most likely because of the giant cloud that is San Diego Comic-Con, just looming in the distance. And, uh... That's when thousands of people leave the comment sections of YouTube videos and venture down to wade through the sea of cosplayers to meet creators that they love to hate so much and maybe buy a pop figurine or two while they're there. So why save the big news for the convention when you can just get it out there now and not risk someone leaking everything? Now, honestly, the only big news making debuts that'll happen down there would be some footage from the slate of DC films like Aquaman, the Wonder Woman sequel, and maybe Shazam. We did get a, uh, we did. Uh, uh, we got a teaser photo yeah. the so, other day, yeah. I'm thinking we're going to see some motion footage. I down hope there. so. It looks, it looks pretty good. But in DC's case, they've already confirmed the biggest rumor surrounding one of their upcoming films, who's going to play the new Joker. Mm -hmm. As you probably learned by now, Jared Leto will still be playing the Joker in a standalone film that exists within the Suicide Squad universe. But for whatever reason, there's another Joker movie being made. Yeah. And that was confirmed this week thanks to The Hollywood Reporter. Yeah, so in that Joker movie, this is going to get very confusing going yes. forward through the next months to years. Uh, anyways, that Joker movie, the non-Leto, non-Suicide Squad one, uh, will reportedly be another standalone film for the character, this time focusing on the Joker's origin story. Uh, the previously rumored Joaquin Phoenix has been confirmed for the role, so it seems like all the rumors from a few months back actually turned out to be 100% true, and at the time, Joaquin was just acting like he had no idea what anyone was talking about. So it's a great strategy. Yeah. The, that way you get to see how the online community right, reacts right, right. Uh, before officially signing on. So if everyone hated it, and we'll get to Scarlett Johansson, we'll but if everyone that. hated Joaquin Phoenix, he'd be like, yeah, you know what? I'm not gonna do it. Yeah. Uh, the community, at the very least, reacted with, I guess, higher hopes for his portrayal, you know, since we were coming off Suicide Squad. So he probably figured, why not? Why not? I'm sure the money's good. You too. can only go up from, from where they were at. But, yeah. But back to the outlet who broke this news, in their post, a Hollywood reporter said the following, Joaquin Phoenix recently finalized his deal to star as the arch nemesis of Batman and shooting is set to begin in September in New York. Todd Phillips, who by the way directed the Hangover films as well as War Dogs and Starsky and Hutch, is directing the film and co-wrote the script, which the studio describes as being an exploration of a man disregarded by society that is not only a gritty character study, but also a broader cautionary tale. They also go on to say that the project's budget is in the 55 million range, significantly lower than the tent poles that dominate the form. And a standalone is meant to be darker and more experimental tone and content, at least as experimental as a studio can be with established brands such as DC, which is described as being akin to a crime drama. So low budget, not taking a whole lot of risk. It's funny how every DC movie, every time they announce it, they're just like, this one's going to be darker. They're basically <laughs> telling you, lower your expectations and it's going to be darker. Yeah, it's like, you know, by the end of it, we're just going to end up with like a DC version of Hostile. Basically. <laughs> yeah. It's, the Joker just literally murders people slowly in front of the camera. And it's just going to be dark as ever. You're not going to be able to see it because it's yeah, going to no. be that dark. Anymore. Yeah, the, the movie never actually plays. They no. just keep the lights down and play audio. It's just audio. Exactly. Uh, what do you think about Joaquin Phoenix for the role? I like it, but then now we have so many standalone Joker movies. It's like, and, and now I just realized that apparently Suicide Squad is in a different universe than the- Yeah, no, they split the universes up. It's crazy. Uh, but will there be any nods or stuff taken from the killing joke, which is the there is that's, no origin story for the Joker, no, but it is. No, that's the closest thing But that's thing the closest thing. So do you think they're going to lift anything from that? Maybe. They could get possibly one of the three origin stories we got from <laughs> that one because, like, yeah. the, jo the Joker says so himself in the comics. If he wanted a pass, he wants it to be multiple choice. I think what they're going here with when they're making the movies darker and darker and darker is, like, how can critics hate it if they can't even see it? Exactly. Does the movie even exist? <laughs> I don't know. And then they cut the budget down, so... It's almost like they're planning to fail, but if they do anything bigger than the budget, I mean, with okay. the director from Starsky and Hutch, like, yeah, it's gonna be. I, I, I have high hopes, but I always have high hopes. Anyway, speaking of giving characters who have already been rebooted one more shot, uh, I'm actually pretty excited about the news that RoboCop is coming back again. Again, uh, but this time it'll be under the guidance of director Neil Blomkamp, whose previous work includes Elysium, Chappie, and one of my favorite modern sci-fi films, District Nine. Though I'm sure you all probably remember that RoboCop was 
already rebooted not too long ago, just back in 2014. I was a young man. <laughs> <laughs> with, some, with something that, uh, this 2014 movie, it was something that didn't really do the character justice and instead just did away with all of the satire and charm of the original and ended up resembling any bland futuristic sci-fi movie with a super suit in it. There isn't a whole lot more info available on this newly announced film, which will be titled Robocop Returns. Mm -hmm. But while speaking to Deadline, Blomkamp expresses excitement about being attached to the project scene. The original definitely had a massive effect on me as a kid. I loved it then and it remains a classic in the end of the 20th century sci-fi catalog with real meaning under the surface. Hopefully that is something we can get closer to in making of a sequel. That's my goal here. What I connected to as a kid has evolved over time. At first, the consumerism, materialism, and Reaganomics, that 80s theme of America on steroids, came through mostly strongly. But as I've gotten older, the part that, that really resonated with me is identity and the search for identity. As long as the human component is there, a good story can work in any time period. It's not locked into a specific place in history. What's so cool about RoboCop is that like good Western sci-fi films and drama, the human connection is really important to a story well told. What draws me now is someone searching for their lost identity taken away at the hands of people who are benefiting from it and seeing his memory jogged by events. So it seems like Neil's uh, brain is already working at full speed for whatever right. he wants to make here. He's like, yeah, no, I'll do it. And I already have plans he, for it. It sounds like he's already written this movie and was just waiting to get the opportunity. And he's it. already done a, a robot uh, movie with Chappie. Exactly. I mean, there, there's other stuff, but the, the Elysium and, and whatever. But District 9, I still hold out one of my favorite sci-fi movies. District 9 I love. So. Yeah. But before we get into the TV stuff for this week, we have to bring you up to speed on this whole Scarlett Johansson drama regarding the movie she was cast in uh, that was called Rub and Tug. <laughs> uh, in, the, in the film, she was set to play the role of Dante Tex Gill, who is transgendered, and as you could imagine, the LGBTQ community was very upset about the fact that she was cast instead of someone from within the transgender community. What made things worse was the fact that Johansson had already been in the crosshairs for something like this when she was cast as the lead in Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. Will she ever learn? No, I, and like it, it's, I don't, I don't know if like she's just saying, yeah, I'll take this part because I think I can play that. Well, or... I think it's a challenge for her. Yeah. It, I, I'm sure she looked at this and thought it was a challenge. And it, it, speaking of Jared Leto, he played the role of a gay man with AIDS in right. Dallas Buyers Club. Like this is definitely a challenge for her. But having just come off the 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 heat the, of the heat Ghost of in the Shell, you might want to just take yeah. an L and just take a knee on this one no. and sit out a couple of plays. Don't take a knee. You get kicked off the field. Right. <laughs> But after just a week of mounting pressure online, Scarlett Johansson has, as of Friday, withdrawn from the Rub and Tug, I hope they renamed that movie, the Rub and Tug movie, saying in a statement, in light of recent ethical questions raised surrounding my casting as Dante Tex Gill, I have decided to respectfully re withdraw my participation in the project. Our cultural understanding of transgender people continues to advance, and I've learned a lot from the community since making my first statement about my casting and realized it was insensitive. Not much more to say about this no. other than the fact that they just announced a director for the Black Widow movie. Yes. And I think this was a lot of bad press for Marvel. Right. Who's, they have her starring in a solo film for that character. And they were probably like, I think behind closed doors, if I could assume, this is just me assuming, but they were probably like, hey, why don't you let this film go? And please, let's go full force let's on go. Black Widow. Right. Like, you've already nailed the role. We have a female director coming in. Everything's lining up to be perfect. Just let this Just let go. let that go and we will have this for you. Yeah. But let's hop back over to TV now because ever since I spoke about Sasha Baron Cohen's new project for Showtime this past Monday, more and more details have started to creep out from the shadows and almost all of these are in the form of complaints lobbed at Showtime and the producers of the show from prominent people with from within the Republican Party who were duped into appearing on the show. And what a list it is. Roy Moore, Sarah Palin, Sheriff Joe Arpaio, Joe Walsh, and Dick Cheney. Uh, with a lot, with the main complaints coming from Roy Moore, Sarah Palin, and Joe Arpaio, uh, oh. obviously, who they were duped and probably feel stupid, but I can't wait. The first to out themselves is someone who will be on Sasha Baron Co Cohen's new show, Who is America, which premieres on Sunday on Showtime, uh, was former vice presidential candidate Sarah Palin, who said in a Facebook post about the appearance, yep, we were duped. You got me, Sasha. Feel better now? I join a long list of American public personalities who have fallen victim to the evil, exploitive, sick humor of the British comedian Sasha Baron Cohen, enabled and sponsored by CBS Showtime. This legit opportunity to honor American vets and contribute to a legit Showtime historical documentary was requested of me via Speakers Bureau. 
out of respect for what I was led to believe would be thoughtful discussion with someone who had you know, served in uniform, I sat through a long interview full of Hollywoodisms, disrespect, and sarcasm, but finally had enough and literally physically removed my mic and walked out, much to Cohen's chagrin. The disrespect of our U.S. military and middle-class Americans via Cohen's foreign commentaries under the guise of interview questions as perverse. Yeah, so Sasha Baron Cohen, uh, he responded to Sarah Palin's post a few days later with a note of his own written completely in character as Dr. Billy yes. Wayne Ruddock Jr. PhD, where he said this to Ms. Palin. Vice President Palin, I am Dr. Billy Wayne Ruddock, founder, CEO, slash accountant of truthbrary.org, and it was I that interviewed you. I did not say I was a war vet. I was in the service, not military, but United Parcel, and I only fought for my country once when I shot a Mexican who came onto my property. Coincidentally, just like our great president, I was sadly prevented from joining the regular army on account of bone spurs being discovered in my testes. I have always admired you for telling the truth about Obama's birth certificate and the location of Russia. But ma'am, I do believe you have been hit by a bullshit grenade and are now bleeding fake news. You used to hunt the most dangerous animals in the country, like wolves and people on welfare. So why hunt a fine citizen journalist like myself? I demand an apology. Whew, yeah. I, yay. <laughs> so yeah, I'm excited. I'm I'm I'm, I'm definitely excited. Yeah. Like so, looking forward to doing the, to the shit show. <laughs> Literally, I'm, it's gonna be a shit it's show. It's gonna be a shit show. I mean, and it's Sasha Baron Cohen interviewing politics. What you expect? It's yeah. gonna be a shit show. It's yeah. gonna be hilarious. But in the meantime, I have a suggestion, and I know that you've heard me talk about it before, and Elliot's talked about it before. Uh, Letter Kenny, the great Canadian show, Letter Kenny is finally available in the United States. You can finally watch it legally. It's on Hulu now. So the first two seasons are there. So I highly suggest going and watching Letter Kenny this weekend as you wait for the premiere of Who is America or anything else you might be doing. Uh, and in the meantime, I'm gonna go see Ant-Man and the Wasp. Awesome. Did you see it? I saw it, it was great. All right, well. Stick around till it ends. I'm very excited. And we'll have to have you back. Uh, One Punch Man season two starts in August. Uh, August, yeah. So we'll have you back on for that. Thank you very much for joining no me. Where problem. can people find you online? You guys can find me at Your Favorite Skinny Man on Instagram. You can add me on Facebook at Aaron Ram Powell. Or you can also find me on Twitter at Your Fave Skinny Man. All right, thank you very much. Cool, thanks See for you guys me. next week when Elliot's back.